a few months ago I did a video talking about young earth creationism and all the flaws that go along with that theory. Today we're going to be reviewing a book from a young earth creationist standing for truth and the book's title is Special Creation. I want to give a quick disclaimer, this is only chapter one of the book. There are so many things I could comment on and so many things that I believe were wrong with what he was saying in that book that I could dedicate like five videos to this, but I'm just doing the first chapter today. So chapter one is all about Adam and Eve and special creation, kind of the title of the book. The first thing he claims is that mitochondrial Adam and Y chromosomal Eve were the actual biblical Adam and Eve. The first issue with this statement is that he's twisting the definition of what mitochondrial Eve and Y chromosomal Adam are. They didn't exist 6,000 years ago, not even 10,000 years ago. Both of them existed over 100,000 years ago, and chances are they never even met each other. In fact, they were probably not even alive during the same time. I did an entire video talking about these two individuals to understand more about who they are. I would recommend checking that out. Another thing that he claims is mitochondrial Eve and Y chromosomal Adam are unique characters in that they don't change, but this is incorrect. Mitochondrial Eve and Y chromosomal Adam can only be identified in retrospect, and they change. In 5,000 years, both those individuals will be different. 10,000 years ago, they were different. So there's no uniqueness in those two characters in our genealogical relatedness. The second issue I found in chapter one was this consistent appeal to authority. There's one time he said, and I quote, do we trust God's word? He also said we must trust the whole Bible. If we're going to if we're gonna trust the New Testament, we have to trust the Old Testament and the beginning. I drew many comparisons between standing for truth as logic and thinking in this chapter to Ken Ham's of, you know, the Ark Encounter and Young Earth Creationism. Ken Ham consistently brings up that appeal to authority, saying that this is you know, the question of how old the earth is is a question of authority, not scientific evidence or logical reasoning, which in both cases, when Ken Ham does it and when Standing for Truth does it, it's extremely, extremely fallacious and just completely illogical. And that's a big thing that Standing for Truth talks about a lot, whether it's on his, you know, on debates, on his YouTube channel, or even in this book, is the idea of human diversity and how we're limited in our diversity and so that suggests a creator and a recent creation for humanity. According to current evidence, about 100,000 years ago, the human population decreased to in between 10 and 30,000 people. He takes this scientific perspective and then compares it to the cheetah in their population today. That's around 7,000. They're suffering from having low genetic diversity. If something like the cheetah coronavirus were to come through, it would decimate the population of cheetahs because they're all almost genetically identical. My issue here is why is young earth creationism a better explanation for our diversity than just regular the theory of evolution? How come coming from 8 people 4,000 years ago is better than coming from 30,000 people 100,000 years ago? This does not help or fix the human diversity issue that he's created here. Saying that God created diversity is just as well as saying, I don't know what created diversity. This is not a solution. This is not an answer to the question. If you'd like me to do a full video talking about why human the human population is less genetically diverse, let me know down below and I will get on that. The last thing I want to mention in chapter one is his consistent badgering of the evolutionary theory and accusing it and the scientists that belong to that ideology of using rescue devices. It seems to me that he's claiming every single time the theory of evolution changes, as it should, the original form of the theory of evolution does not accurately reflect reality. It has changed over the years as science has disproven things and proven other things. And so the theory is expected to change, but he says each time that it changes, instead of that being a positive thing, it's just a rescue device that they use to help keep the theory of evolution afloat. I really don't get this critique of the theory of evolution. Is standing for truth suggesting that with the acquisition of new information, we shouldn't reevaluate our current perspectives on what really happened in the past? Not to mention his whole theory revolves around the existence of a rescue device. He claims that God did diversity. Is that not a rescue device in the most plain and simple terms? Claiming that something outside of everything 
solve the issue that we have. Another thing I want to mention, I didn't include this in the main points because I don't know if this was on purpose or not, but there were quite a few factual errors that I read throughout the book. And it seemed to me like they weren't on accident. And many of them bolstered his arguments and his perspectives. So I'd assume that they were on purpose, but this is extremely disingenuous. And I, I really don't respect that in work of any kind. And so I'd be wary about reading this book and making sure that you check the statistics and the facts for yourself as you go along. I think this video shows just another example of the issues with young earth creationism. They don't like it when science progresses. It seems they don't like it when science comes up with answers, rational answers to these questions that we've had that seem to kind of push God out of the equation, even though they do represent reality. Before I end this video, I do want to say that I appreciate and respect the work that Standing for Truth is doing, although I don't agree with it and I'm open and happy to go and critique it. I do see the need for skepticism everywhere, even though in this case I think it's it leans toward the side of irrational. I do respect what he's doing, and I don't want to discourage anybody from going and checking out his information. Thank you for watching this video. I do expect some interaction with Standing for Truth, which I'm excited about. So if you want to see that, I'd highly recommend subscribing and checking, his, checking out his channel as well.